Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you all for coming today to the Navy ship naming announcement. Today's briefing will consist of statements only. There will be no questions and no questions and answers following the statements. Along with Secretary of the Navy Ray Mavis, today we are honored to be joined by Second Lady Dr. Jill Biden and her special guest, her husband, Vice President Biden, <laughs> Senator Tom Carper, and Lieutenant Governor Matt Den. Thank you all for being here today. And if you're all ready, I will turn it over to Secretary Ray Mabus, our 75th Secretary of the Navy. Oops. Well, thank you all for being here. I particularly want to thank Dr. Biden for being here, Senior Senator from Delaware, Tom Carper, and the Lieutenant Governor of Delaware, Matt Den. And Dr. Biden, I understand you have brought your spouse yes. with you. <laughs> I'm pleased to announce today that one of our most advanced Navy platforms, a fast attack nuclear submarine, SSN-791, will be named USS Delaware. The name Delaware has been prominent and honored throughout our great naval history, but it is a name that has been out of our fleet for too long, and I'm happy to change that today. Seven ships have been named for the first state, stretching back to Navy's earliest days of wooden ships under sail. The last USS Delaware was Navy's first dreadnought, a coal-burning, steam-powered, all-big-gun battleship. But that Delaware decommissioned in 1923. Delaware will be part of the Virginia class, which are built to excel in traditional areas of submarine warfare, such as against other submarines, against surface targets, against targets on land. But Delaware will have some non-traditional capabilities as well, gathering intelligence and delivering Navy SEALs undetected to their missions. During her service, which will begin in 2018, Delaware may patrol the waters from the North Atlantic to the Western Pacific to under the Arctic ice. Construction of the USS Delaware will begin next year and will be shared by two shipyards, Huntington Ingalls in Virginia and General Dynamics Electric Boat in Connecticut. These submarines are a great success story. They have been on or ahead of schedule and under budget. This summer, we commissioned another one of these great boats, the USS Mississippi, well named. <laughs> that, that submarine set a record for the program's fastest delivery a year ahead of schedule. The Virginia class program has been a model for all our shipbuilding. In 2008, the year before this administration began, our fleet stood at 278 ships, 38 ships fewer that on 9-11-2001. But we have turned that around. While just three ships were built in 2008, we have in the last two years, in spite of a more challenging fiscal environment, put 42 ships under contract. Most of them fixed price, multi-year deals. We've increased competition and oversight, and we're on track to reach 300 ships before the end of the decade. The Navy is unique in constructing these incredibly complex and technologically advanced platforms that are designed to last for 30, 40, even 50 years. There will be sailors who serve on Delaware who are not yet born. Today's sailors operating these amazing platforms are incredibly talented, highly skilled, and eagerly accept the responsibility we demand from even the most junior crew member. Most Americans don't realize what sailors do or even know anyone in the Navy because less than 1% of our population wears America's cloth. And when the Navy is doing our job, we're most often a long, long way from home. We are truly America's away team. That's why we name some of our ships for states and other places in America. It's a reminder of home for those who serve and a visible representation of America in every port 
around the globe. There's always a strong connection between the people of a state and the ship that bears its name. For that and for many other reasons, I'm very proud to announce also today that Dr. Jill Biden has agreed to serve as sponsor of the USS Delaware. Dr. Biden, as you all know, our nation's second lady, a proud Blue Star mom, and a renowned and accomplished educator. Her military connections run very deep and very strong. Many of us know of Bo Biden's service in the U.S. Army, including a deployment to Iraq. But a couple of weeks ago, it was announced that Dr. Biden's son, Hunter, will receive a commission in the United States Navy as a public affairs officer. Her support of the military goes far beyond that of the service of her sons. Dr. Biden is co-sponsored with our First Lady, Michelle Obama, the National Initiative, joining forces, providing support and expanding opportunities for veterans and active duty personnel and their families. That exemplifies the commitment to those who serve and who have served and the strength of character of Jill Biden and of her home, the first state. I know Delaware citizens will honor their state's namesake, follow her as she comes to life in a few years and embrace those who sail in her for decades to come as she in turn honors the first state's legacy as she sails the seas in defense of our nation and upholding her state's motto, freedom and liberty, and the Navy motto, Semper Fortis, forever courageous. Now it's my happy privilege to introduce the sponsor of the USS Delaware, Dr. Jill Biden. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Secretary Mavis, for that kind introduction. This is a, a very exciting day. As a proud military mom and a very proud Delawarean, I am honored to sponsor the USS Delaware. One of the best parts of serving a second lady is that I have the opportunity to meet with so many members of our military and their families. I am always inspired by their strength and resilience. No matter what challenges they face, our men and women in uniform serve with courage and distinction. They are the reason we have the best, most powerful military in the world. And it's our duty to make sure that they have everything they need to stay safe and do their jobs. They need the very best equipment and technology that we can provide them with. And soon, that will include the USS Delaware. It's a special honor for me to sponsor this submarine because I'm such a proud military mom. Four years ago, as the Secretary alluded to, I stood in Dover, Delaware, watching as our son Bo prepared to deploy to Iraq with the Delaware Army National Guard. I remember it like it was yesterday. And this year, I'm looking forward to standing with our son Hunter when he is commissioned as an ensign in the United States Navy. He follows in the footsteps of two of his grandfathers who have also served in the Navy. The Navy was a memorable part of my life as a young girl. My father would also always take my mother and his five daughters to watch the Blue Angels at Willow Grove Naval Air Station. His picture in his dress whites was proudly displayed by the front door of our home. And through his stories and beliefs, he ingrained in all of us his sense of patriotism and pride in the Navy. But most of all, I am honored for my state of Delaware, which is steeped in military history. For Delaware's war hero, Captain Thomas McDonough, whose famous victory in the Battle of Plattsburgh helped end the War of 1812, to Newcastle, serving as the home of some of the first female Air Force pilots, to the thousands of Delawareans who have deployed to Iraq and Afghanistan. Our state has so much to be proud of. And today, 
Delaware's 77,000 veterans carry on the rich tradition of service. This great tradition of having a civilian-sponsored Navy vessels helps to cement the critical connection between our service members and the civilians back home who love them, miss them, and owe them a debt of gratitude. So in the years to come, I'm looking forward to meeting the sailors who serve on the boat. I'm excited to get to know their families because wherever the Delaware goes all around the world, a little piece of my heart will go with her. So thank you, Secretary Mavis, for this honor. Thank you all, and may God bless our servicemen and women and their families. Thank you. Royal Grove Naval Air Station. Yeah. <laughs> Mr. Vice President, I remember when the guys in my squad were used to like look forward to the uh, the air show there to see hope the five women that looked like Jill and her <laughs> sisters would show up. <laughs> Never imagined. Little girls. <laughs> yeah, it's, uh, <laughs> well, it's great to stand here next to uh, to you and Mr. Secretary. Uh, thank you so much for uh, reading that letter that we sent to you, our delegation sent to you a year or so ago and the action that's being taken here today. And great to be here with our Lieutenant Governor and certainly with our, uh, the spouse of the sponsor of uh, the, uh, this, uh, this, uh, this ship. I um, spent a lot of years of my, my life in the Navy, about uh, 23 all in, plus another five, four as a uh, Naval uh, midshipman. And uh, I uh, love the Navy. I love being part of the Navy for all, uh, all those years. And I, uh, I remember uh, we used to fly in and out of Willow Grove Naval Air Station, but we actually, all over the world, uh, my job uh, when we weren't flying around in uh, Southeast Asia was to track submarines. And uh, we tracked uh, Soviet uh, ballistic fast attack boats, cruise boats, um, and our own uh, as well in all the, the oceans of, um, of, of, of the world. And uh, we would also uh, uh, train with our own submarines. And I'm standing here before to tell you that uh, it wasn't all that hard to find the, uh, the Soviet uh, ballistic missile boats or the fast attack boats or the cruise missiles, the submarines, but we could almost never find ours. <laughs> and uh, they were uh, a breed apart, and it was just so good. And they had great, wonderful people on, the, on their uh, crews, some of the, the best and brightest in the Navy, and they knew their stuff. They knew their stuff. Uh, Delaware, a lot of people don't think of uh, Delaware much as, a, uh, as a, maybe a Navy town, but uh, when the uh, as first Swedes and Finns uh, sailed across the, uh, the Atlantic and, and pulled it into the Christina River. They named it the Christina River after the trial queen of Sweden. But they, they landed in a place uh, that they declared, uh, which now Wilmington declared it the uh, colony of New Sweden. And uh, today, uh, there's a replica of the ship that brought the first Swedes and Finns to, to, our, uh, to our state there, there at the, uh, on the Christina River. And about a mile or so from where that ship uh, lies at anchor, uh, there is a compass rose that's literally embedded in the river walk that's part of our riverfront uh, uh, in uh, Wilmington today. And on the Compass Rose, on the, the eight points of the Compass Rose, there are uh, eight ships that are, that are named, all destroyer escorts. And they are some of the hundreds of ships that were built uh, in Wilmington on the Christina River uh, during uh, World War II. Ships that helped uh, win the war, uh, not only on the, uh, the destroyer escort side, but troop landing ships and other ships as, as well. And the other end of the state, a place that our, our spouse of the sponsor knows well, is a place called ha Cape and Lopen uh, State Park. And it used to be an all military installation. And uh, today it's a beautiful state park, beautiful uh, jewel for, for people from all over the world who come to Delaware and particularly to, to there. But one of the military installations that used to be there was uh, an, an AFAC, naval facility, which is uh, part of the, uh, the team that we used to track those Soviet uh, uh, submarines and, uh, uh, throughout the, the Atlantic. and and uh, the Mediterranean, even the Mediterranean as well. And um, I, as a guy who was, uh, was a Navy P3 mission commander, I had the pleasure, not even knowing I was working with uh, the folks in Del Delaware, but, uh, but working with the NAFAC in, in our efforts to, to track uh, Soviet submarines carrying dozens of, of warheads that could have, in a, in a hot war situation, rained down on, on, our, on, on, our, on our state. So there's a, a great uh, Navy tradition in, in, in Delaware, a great shipbuilding tradition in, in Delaware, and a great submarine uh, tradition in, in Delaware that we uh, we celebrate here today. And I'll close with uh, with this: the uh, the day I was sworn into office and uh, escorted into the uh, to the Senate by uh, by uh, by our Vice President when he was a uh, a mere mortal. <laughs> 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 uh, the uh, but uh, we uh, later on we had a, a, a reception 
just to thank the people that had uh, helped me in, in the campaign, and the vice president was good to come, Mike Castle was good to come. We had mm -hmm. a wonderful time. For the first time ever, I had a chance from people wanted autographs, and I would sign my name, Tom Carper, and then under that I would sign uh, USS Delaware. United States Senator Delaware. US. I've signed that a thousand times. <laughs> and the first time I ever signed it, I thought, you know, wouldn't it be great if we could have a ship named the USS Delaware? I thought that the first time I ever signed it, I signed my, my name that way uh, just this morning. And I thought again, finally, at last, we're going to have, uh, have that ship. So this is a very special day for, uh, for those reasons and, and for many others. But uh, I want to thank you, uh, Mr. Secretary. And it's great to be here with, uh, with our second lady. Um, and with the Lieutenant Governor and all of you to, to celebrate this day. Thank you. Matt. No one asked me for my autograph at my inauguration, <laughs> so I don't have a similar story. Uh, Mr. Vice President, uh, it's a nice surprise to have you here today. I know that Pennsylvania has been uh, trying to claim you for some time. I saw yesterday that New Jersey had tried to claim you, and I'm very pleased that you could be here today so we could establish for the record that Delaware still has dibs on the vice president. <laughs> thank you for being here. Uh, and Secretary Mabus, on behalf of our state, thank you for the honor of allowing us to visit you here at the Pentagon today. And thank you, obviously, for your decision to name this ship after the great state of Delaware. Um, I also wanted to recognize Jill Biden's role here today and to thank her for her support of military families between our, our Air Force base in Delaware and the extraordinary commitment of the Delaware National Guard in Iraq and Afghanistan, uh, Boehm being one of, of many soldiers in Delaware who have bravely stepped up to serve. Delaware families have really been a critical part of our nation's fight for safety and freedom, and uh, we've seen the toll that that fight takes on families, both when their loved ones are away and for some when they return. And we really just can't thank you enough thank you. for the role thank that you've played and the attention that you've drawn to these families. Um, some families, uh, including families in Delaware, pay an especially heavy price and bear a heavier burden than others. And we actually stand here today where the last Delawarean from the U.S. Navy was killed in, in hostile fire. Navy mate second class Matthew Flacco uh, was killed at the Pentagon on September 11th. Uh, I met his parents years ago at a park in Delaware that was named after him, just about a block from my sister's house in Newark. And I've gotten to know his mom a little bit. I just called her this morning to tell her that I would be down here. Uh, last year on the 10th anniversary of the September 11th attacks, she told me about uh, her mixed emotions on September 11th, how much she appreciated all the attention every September 11th that was paid to her son's memory, but also how much harder it made it for her to come to terms with his loss. And, and I wanted to honor today uh, the memory of Matthew Flacco, who died here on September 11th. We in Delaware are honored to have a ship named after our state. Uh, we're honored to have Dr. Jill Biden as the sponsor of the ship. And I accept that honor on behalf of each man and woman in our state who has put himself or herself in harm's way to defend our country. It's really their talent and bravery that forms the backbone of our military. And again, very pleased to be here today on behalf of Delaware. <laughs>